Insurance companies are dropping homeowners with solar panels in Florida. Contractors are gouging customers with high installation costs and financing fees. And cheap, low-quality solar panels are being installed on homeowners' roofs. Homeowners in Florida are facing more problems with solar systems than ever before in 2024, and things are only getting worse. In this video, I'm going to reveal the dark side of residential solar in Florida in 2024 and do this by explaining to you guys the four common mistakes that first-time solar homeowners are making in Florida so that you can learn from these mistakes and avoid being one of these people. And make sure that you stick around until the end because I'll be giving away a cheat sheet guide which you can download that will go over everything that you need to know about solar in Florida, including what the best solar panels are for Florida, best installation companies, local rebates and incentives, and even more. To begin, if you've ever done a YouTube search into solar for your home in Florida, you've likely seen reports of insurance companies dropping coverage for homeowners with solar panels, leaving them without protection, and this is certainly a reality. To give you some background as to why this was happening, in the early 2010s, residential solar installs began to really take off thanks to the decline decline in panel prices and introduction of solar financing. Though installations were happening mainly towards the west coast of the country in states like California and Arizona where energy rates were the highest. In fact, for a long time, the state of California alone was accounting for more than 50% of all annual installations. However, over time and specifically over the past five years, competition hit a breaking point and state policy in the west began to no longer incentivize solar and so many contractors began moving east. Now, Florida on the other hand enacted policy making it one of the most residential solar friendly states in the entire country after Governor DeSantis vetoed House Bill 741, which would have cut incentives for residential solar in the state, a bill that was being pushed by lawyers from both FPL and Duke Energy. And that was great news for Florida homeowners. But unfortunately, with that has come hundreds of new solar contractors moving into the state left and right, looking to make a quick profit and then bail. Unfortunately, compared to other states in Florida, it's relatively easy to obtain your contractor's license to install solar. So we have seen in many cases, companies flock here, spend all of their time and attention on marketing and sales and then fail to install the systems properly as they do not understand the local construction and permitting process. This has become one of the main reasons now that you've seen these insurance companies begin to drop coverage for homeowners in Florida. They come out to the property, see that the construction quality is poor and the equipment is just not up to par with the weather conditions that Florida can bring and they do not want to take the risk of insuring that. In all places, but really in Florida, I would encourage you to vet your solar contractor, you know, go online, read all of the reviews and really be picky about working with a highly reputable contractor who has proven that they do good work and will be a company that you want to partner with for your solar project moving forward. In fact, just recently, even the Florida Attorney General had to come out and take legal action against a number of solar companies doing really poor work around the state. She made it clear that a number of solar installers were doing illegal business practices, such as representing themselves as working for the utility company, installing without necessary permits and utility applications, as well as bundling the solar systems with alarm systems and water heaters to get homeowners locked into contracts. But again, this is why you really want to make sure that you're working with a highly reputable contractor when you're installing solar. Don't just shop around on who's the cheapest price and who's offering you the lowest monthly payment. You really want to make sure that you do your homework and ask yourself if you're working with a highly reputable contractor who's going to do quality work. And of course, if you need some help with selecting the right contractor for your project, we would be happy to help you with that here at Solar Pros. We work with some of the best solar companies across the state. So if you're looking to receive a solar proposal for your house in Florida, or maybe you already have a bid and you would simply like to receive a comparison bid just to make sure that you're getting a good deal, feel free to reach out to us by booking a call using the link below the video and we would be happy to provide you with some options for your home. Now, the second thing that you need to know about getting solar for your home in Florida is that it's extremely important to invest into a high quality solar panel, which can produce well at high temperatures and stand through the harsh weather conditions. There are places in the country like Southern California where you can get away with installing lower cost solar panels as for the climate does not present many natural events that could test the panels. But in Florida specifically, you really need to make sure that you're investing into a high quality solar panel if you want a highly productive and functioning solar system for 30 plus years. Now, one thing that you may already know about solar panels is that they come with warranties, oftentimes a 12 to 25 year product warranty, which guarantees against manufacturer defects, and a 25 to 30 year linear power warranty, which guarantees that the panel will not degrade in performance more than a given amount year over year. However, the one thing that you will not be warranted for will be damage caused to the panels from natural events, such as windstorms, property damage, hail, or even damage from a tree branch falling onto the panels. And so investing into a panel with a strong frame and a strong glass is really the best way to mitigate against these events from happening. Aside from talking about investing into a durable panel, it's also extremely important that we invest into a panel that has a low temperature coefficient. Now, when I speak about temperature coefficient, I'm simply referring to how
how well the solar panel will perform in high temperature environments. Generally speaking, solar panels will operate at their highest efficiency with conditions of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And for every degree above that, they're slightly less efficient. In Florida specifically, temperature coefficient comes out to being one of, if not the most important ratings of a solar panel when evaluating options, because while average annual temperatures in the mid afternoon in Florida throughout the year hover around 80 degrees, the actual rooftop temperatures can be upwards of 20 to 30 degrees higher, impacting the panel's daytime production massively. Therefore, there are a couple panels that I do think work best in the state of Florida. So number one, I think the Aptos DNA 440 watt is a great panel as it's one of the most durable panels on the market that you can buy. However, it does not have the best temperature coefficient on the market. So the panel that I really have found works best for the state of Florida is going to be the Meyer Burger solar panel. Meyer Burger just recently opened up a manufacturing facility in Arizona, making an American made and manufactured solar panel. And the new panels coming out of the States have an industry leading low temperature coefficient rating of negative 0.26%, meaning that the panel operates very well at high temperatures. And they've all done this while using what is called a glass glass design, meaning that the panel not only has a glass front sheet, but also it has a glass back sheet. With the majority of residential panels, what you'll have is a glass front sheet. So a large piece of glass to protect the solar cells from the elements. But then under that panel, you might have a polyester or plastic back sheet. This can unfortunately make the panel more susceptible to cracking or damage as it's going to be more flimsy. And so by Meyerberger having a glass glass design, they offer a very durable panel to homeowners, all while still being tier one in other ratings. Another dark reality right now in the state of Florida is that many solar installation companies have been gouging homeowners with unnecessarily high installation costs and financing fees and also tricking homeowners into signing deceptive lease agreements. The reality in Florida right now is that in 2024, we're seeing more companies than ever before only selling third party ownership systems, oftentimes called power purchase agreements or leases. So a fancy way of saying a lease, a power purchase agreement essentially puts you into a rental agreement with your solar panel system. So you sign a lease contract with the solar company, they install the system on your roof, and then you make them monthly rent payments each month, which will escalate by about 3% per year. Now, due to high interest rates in 2024, leases are being offered more than ever. And the reason being is that they're really going to give homeowners the lowest initial monthly payment more than any other options such as financing or purchasing. However, there are a couple things homeowners need to watch out for when leasing solar. So the first thing that you need to know is that if you lease your solar system, you will not be eligible for any federal or state tax credits, such as the 30% solar federal tax credit, because, well, you don't own your system. Secondly, while there is typically a low initial monthly payment, that payment is escalating at a rate of 3% on average annually for the term of 20 or 25 years. So towards the end of your term, you will likely be looking at payments that are over double than what they were in year number one. Leases can also cause a number of issues when you go to sell your home as the homeowner would have to agree to take over the lease. So make sure you understand the model in which the solar company is selling you solar before you make any decisions. Florida is a relatively lower cost market for solar compared to other markets like the Northeast and California. So you really should not expect to pay more than $3 price per watt for your solar system, but not including batteries. Lastly, in Florida specifically, I have seen many companies overcharging on financing. So if you are looking to do same as cash price financing for your solar system and a company is quoting you more than eight or 9% annual percentage rate, you're likely not getting the best deal. Now, this information provided will help you navigate going solar for your home in Florida, but if you are in the process of shopping for solar, you also need to make sure that you understand the common regrets that people have after purchasing solar for their home. So make sure you check out my video going over the five things that solar homeowners regret after buying solar for their home, which will pop up on the screen now. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.